Hello, I'm Alley Cat Rayner, inventor of a patented new kind of yarn which creates a pattern as you work it. I call it Rainish Yarn. Come join me as I explore the world of yarn. Hello and welcome to my first YouTube video ever. I didn't think that my first YouTube video was going to be about how to build a drawing rack for wool, but it is. And that's because I have a wonderful coworker who gave me a huge bag of free wool and I had to get it washed and dried before mold took it over being in that plastic bag. So I had the means to wash my wool, but I didn't have the means to dry my wool because I didn't have a dry rack. So I looked on YouTube to try to find a tutorial on how to make a dry rack. I didn't find one, so I figured I would make one. This YouTube video has two sections. The first is the short section and the second is the long section. The first section is a brief overview of how to make it. The second section is my long vlog showing me making it. So let's go. What you need, I went to Home Depot, is some PVC pipe. This is half inch and it is two feet long. You're gonna need 13 of these. You also need some PVC connectors. This one is a T-shape, you're gonna need two of these. This one has three legs and you're gonna need four of these. This is gonna be for the edges, the corners. And just so you know, this one uh, does have two soft insides and one threaded inside. And then you need six of these gizmos. So this guy is threaded on one side and then nice and smooth on the inside. Lastly, you're going to need some tool. I used white, but you can use whatever color you want to as long as you're pretty sure it's not going to bleed onto your wool. You're going to want your tool to be about eight and a half feet long and about three feet wide, just for good measure. So here's how you put it together. First, you're going to make the frame for the table. This is going to require six PVC pipes. Your table will be two PVC pipes long and one PVC pipe wide. For the long sides of your table, you're going to connect the two PVC pipes with your T-shaped connector. For the corners of your table, you're going to use your three-hold connector. Now that your frame is connected, it's time to add on our last gizmo connector, which looks like this. You're going to screw the male threaded part into the female threaded part, like so. You'll do this for all six connectors. Next, you're going to take six PVC pipes and pop them into the smooth holes of the gizmo connectors that you just screwed on. The remaining rods are going to be used across the table to create some extra stability. I thread some yarn through the inside of the PVC pipes and tied knots on each end to secure the rods going across the table. The last step is laying the tool over the table. You can cut or fold your tool to size to fit the table. It is purposely two times longer than the table is long. This is so that half of it goes over the table and is secured onto the table, and the remaining half, which hangs off of the end of the table, can be folded up over your wool when it's drying so that the wind won't take it away. When you have fit the first four feet or so of tool, 
to your table. You can either tape it on like I did, or you can try hot gluing it on. Secure the tool to three edges of the table this way. This is a collapsible drying rack, so if you want to, you can just pull the legs off and stash it in a closet or wherever it fits. If you don't want it to collapse, it probably won't on its own, but you could always super glue it like I actually did, uh, just to make sure that it stays that way permanently forever. There is special PVC pipe glue that you can purchase if you want to, but I didn't want to, so I didn't. If that explained it enough for you, you can stop the video now. If you like this video, please remember to hit that like button. If you want to watch the vlog of me putting this together, keep on watching. Okay, so this is my uh, country ghetto way of cleaning my wool. I got some free wool from a coworker who had sheared her sheep and um, I'm thinking that the wool is probably going to be really short, um, have a short staple length, but I'm going to do with it everything that I can. So I'm going to brush it after I clean it and see if I can spin it up or not. So I boiled a pot of wool on the stove and then I brought it out here. I can't pour the, um, no, you stay away. Oh, stay away. Come here. I can't pour this down the drain because we're on a, a septic system and we have to be really careful about what we pour down our drains. I'm going to pour this into there, which is um, I think for cleaning fruit in the sink, but that's I use it for straining my wool. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I just poured out the wool into my fruit draining basket. And I'm going to get my gloves on and squeeze the water out of the wool. This is really hot. It's really hot water it was in. A little bit of soap. And yes, there is vegetable matter and um, some fecal matter in there too. I'm going to squeeze the water out. And I put it into the bowl so that they're into the pot. So that means that everything that's in the pot is dry or moderately dry all right so this is what it looks like um, after that process we have our squeezed wool in the pot and we have our strainer that's now empty and uh does this wool look clean no not at all i have done two rinses so far i'm probably going to do another two rinses or so and into the wool pot this wool pot is uh, strictly for wool not for food obviously. Okay so I just kissed my husband's uh, shirt from the back. I hugged him from the back and I gave him a kiss on his shirt and he's been out uh, mowing the lawn outside for four hours. Uh, we have a big yard. I noticed that I have some color on my face that I didn't have before so I have to tell him that he needs to go and change his shirt before he sits on our white couch so I'll be right back. Okay so my husband is changing his shirt. Woohoo! Okay, so the next step is to create my dry station. Um, I went to Home Depot yesterday and got some materials, and I'll show them to you in a second. Okay, so I changed because uh, it's hot in here. What I got from Home Depot was 17 uh, half inch PVC pipes. I got two of these uh, T PVC pipes and four of these, I don't know what you call that kind of PVC pipe. And I got six of these connectors that are grooved on one side and smooth on the inside, on the opposite end. I'm going to start by tightening these guys 
It's actually kind of hard. Okay, so I got most of my uh, couplings connected to the, the round part and connected to the round part. Couplings connected to the, I don't know what these are called, this thing. So I got these little parts connected to all of the other parts, uh, about that close. So all of them I could not approximate one side to the other side uh, so that they're touching. Um, but since they're all about the same, so you see they're all they all have that space that I just couldn't I wasn't strong enough or whatever to um, to screw them in. They're all the same, so that's all that matters. Um, the end result is going to be even. So I'm making the dry station twice as long as the um, PVC pipe came. So I'm using this coupling to connect the two rods. Okay, so that is actually it for the frame of the table. So now I'm just going to um, put it upright. Sorry about the background noise, my husband is watching um, an alien movie. So we have our leftover five rods, and we're going to make the center portion more stable for um, having heavy wet wool on it by um, laying the rods across. So I have some nice thick green yarn here, and I'm going to String it through the hole of the PVC pipe. Okay, so I want to, I'll go ahead and tie it here. I'm just gonna take the pipe and the yarn, wrap the yarn around twice just to make it extra secure. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and wrap it around twice. I'm going to rock back and forth so that I'm inching the yarn tighter. And when I'm satisfied that it's sufficiently tight, I'm going to put my thumb in the middle of the knot and secure the knot. So I'm just gonna try to wrap this around equally. So take it around one side, take it around the other side. So it kind of makes this figure eight pattern.
table, I have this extra length of tool that I did not uh, cut or fold or tape down. And that's because it gets really windy outside and while this is drying outside, the wind could take the dried, lighter wool and blow it away. So what I can do is fold this over the wool that's on the drying rack. Uh, I did not measure appropriately when I went to Joanne Fabrics, so it doesn't cover the entire table. But for me, what I can do is just shove over the wool and put this down, and then I can get a rock or something heavy enough to secure the tool. That way, this wool is not going to fly away. Um, or I could just go to Drum Fabrics and uh, buy some extra tool. So I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make a dry rack with not too much money and not too much time. And I'll see you next time. In the car with me while I have the... Can you tell your zombies not to yell when I'm recording? Now my husband's singing. Opera, it sounds like. Scales.